All right. So, um, this is the main triangulation class and you can see it tells you what all kind of manifold snappy already has. It has a bunch of manifolds. So, when Jeff Weeks way back in the 90s wrote snappy, one of the things which he did was to make a census of manifolds. So, he has a census of cusp manifolds, he has a census of closed hyperbolic manifolds uh, and then later on people were also doing census of not senses by crossing number that is included in snappy. There is also not senses by tetrahedral number the least number of tetrahedra these are called simplest hyperbolic knots that is also included in snappy. So, if you just if you just scroll down um, it, it just tells you <coughs> it just tells you there is a 942 is the complement of 942 is the complement of the of the link 942 uh, m 125 1245 tells you the snappy census manifold M125 with some den filling. The first cusp is, is a two cusp manifold, it is one, one two uh, den filling on first, second cusp is four five. The manifold opens a link editor where you can draw, so that is called plink, I will just show you that in a, in a moment. And then if you scroll down it can, it says there is a Rolson tables, that is a not tables, so there are that is included. There is the hostess is still to it not skip table. So, I think these are knots up to maybe 12 or 14 crossings I forget. Uh, then there is the, 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 these are the simplest hyperbolic knots. Um, so, K621 means that it is a 21st knot uh, with uh, 6 tetrahedra whose complement can be divided into uh, uh, 6 tetrahedra. And then there is also you can also enter the Daukert this little bit code and load up a knot if you know that. So, various ways of including knots and manifolds which are already there in snappy. Um, in addition there you can in, you can add braids in it, here is a way you can add braids. So, you can play around with this. Um, then there is also a bunch of uh, surface bundles which you can do and this is the program called twister written by Mark Bell. Um, and using twister you can you can uh, uh, load into snappy various hyper uh, various surface bundles punctured surface closed surface bundles and so on and you can you can specify what the monodromy map is so so let's just do a little demo so let's take this manifold um, the link um, 818 and so you can find out what the volume of it is you can you can now compute various uh, invariants there is a topological invariant that is the fundamental group you can compute homology of it uh, well you know what the homology is and you can you can um, hit tab and get all possibilities of what all you can use. So, you can get the you can see for example, the tetrahedral shapes. Um, so, m dot say tetrahedra shapes. So, here is the tetrahedra shapes. So, how many tetrahedra does it have? You will have to count, but you can see and this tells you how accurate the shapes are being counted. So, these are these are of course approximations uh, you can also get the gluing equations. So, this is like a very cool um, the gluing equations which you are talking about you can actually get those gluing equations. This is of course, a, 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 a string of numbers so you need to understand how it how the how it goes and there is a there is a very nice help tool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it, it with respect to the triangulation which snappy has computed, right? I said it does this octahedra and then does a bunch of two, three moves and then fixes the triangulation. So, um, I think you if you if you just do gluing equations dot help, maybe no, maybe it is help gluing equations. Do you know how to get the help? Oh, there. So, it, it tells you 
if you just put a question mark it tells you how to it is exactly telling you what the coefficients are it is all in log shapes and so on you see that. So, there is a there is a lot of things which are written up. So, there is your m triangulation m 4 is the figure 8 naught. Let me just show you one very nice command it is called browse. So, if you browse the manifold it will it will uh, for, for it will give you all the information is knows about the manifold. For example, here is the volume that is the churn Simons effectively 0, here is the fundamental group where orientability. Um, now, whether you can detect well you are 818, so you know you can detect it, it is the Dirichlet domain, it also can compute the Dirichlet domain, I do not know why it is not computing. Uh, these are the cusp neighborhoods which you can do. So, that is how that is a really nice set of invariants. Um, so, uh, it uh, this has a bunch of triangulation, it is developing the cusp shape with respect to the triangulation. So, you can um, if, if you start studying cusps, you will see you will be able to derive much more information from it. Uh, it tells you what the symmetry group of it is, it has very high symmetry d 8. So, you can see from the picture outside, uh, there is the picture right, uh, you, you can recognize it from the from the logo, it has lot of symmetry. So, uh, yeah it does, it is supposed to show, I do not know why it is not showing. Uh, because as the center changes, the domain can change. Yes, and oh, it says it failed to compute Dirichlet domain. Um, where does Snappy choose the center? I think for cusp manifolds. Let's let's well actually you know let's just do the Dirichlet returns a Dirichlet domain representing a Dirichlet domain of hyperbolic manifold typically centered at a point which is the local maximum for the injectivity radius. All of this documentation is written by Jeff Weeks, uh, snappy was Jeff Weeks thesis at Princeton. So, what he did was he wrote up the code and his advisor Bill Thurston argued at Princeton that he should get his PhD for the program and obviously, they were like what have you proved and and Thurston convinced the faculty that this should be it is it's good enough for a thesis and so, he submitted his thesis is he printed out the snappy code and that was his thesis. And so, in the code in the documentation uh, you can see that is his documentation this is not done by Nathan and Mark, this is done by, by uh, uh, Jeff and there are lemmas and propositions in the in the code, in the computer code of snappy, there are lemmas and propositions of various things which he needs like there is a there is a lot of things which he is computing so many things right. So, you need to show this exists, that exists that and so, th and he in the code exactly right as documentation, he just wrote up all of this all of these lemmas and so on. So, that was his thesis amazing. So, um, so it tells you it is the it is at a point which is the local maximum of the injectivity radius. It will have ideal vertices if the manifold is not closed. Okay. Yeah, let's do an arithmetic example. Um, yes, so let's do a new manifold. Um, let's do our favorite knot, which is four one. This is the figure eight knot. And so let us browse this, right. So, this is the volume is 2 v 3. So, um, the churn Simons is 0, it is because chirality. Um, and here is the link, yeah, that is the figure 8 knot you can recognize. Symmetry is d 4. Here is the cusp neighborhood you can see. Uh, maybe I can give some more information here. One, let me just. Um, so, these are labeling. So, what is going on in this picture? 
So what you are seeing here are horror balls. And you can expand the horror balls or you can contract the horror balls. And you are, you are looking at it from infinity. So there are all of these horror balls which are, they are, they are all one color because there is only one component. If you had a two component link which I will show, you will have different components. Now the, you see there are these numbers, right? Can you guess what the numbers are? Actually, what, what do you think you are seeing here? You are looking, you're looking at from, from a point at infinity, right? You know that the, that the figure 8 not complement is made out of two ideal tetrahedra. So what do you think you are seeing? What is the link triangle for ideal tetrahedra, regular ideal tetrahedra? It is an equilateral triangle, right? And so you see all the tessellation of the plane by equilateral triangles. So what you are doing is you take one equilateral triangle, one ideal tetrahedra, you develop it at say some 0, 1, uh, uh, the, si the sixth root of unity, right, and infinity. And now you keep developing the map, right? You keep developing, you keep gluing according to the faces. And then there is also, you will have to glue along the, along the other faces also, but that is going down. But just, just develop it onto the, onto the you are developing the cusp. So you are just developing it as you go horizontally. You have this three faces, you keep gluing next, et cetera, next, et cetera. And so when you glue, you can see that these are the edges. There are two kinds of edges, 0 and 1, right? Only two edges. And the horizontal ones which you are seeing are the edges which are semicircular and the vertical points which you are seeing are the vertical edges. Do you see what I am saying? See, you start developing like this, right? And then on this face, put another same tetrahedron with exactly the, you have to glue. So you have to measure where this, this will end up. And now you can see that these are the two triangles. These are equilateral triangles. That's what you are seeing. And now there are various edges. So this edge, say for example, is zero. This edge is one. This edge is one. This edge may be zero. This edge may be zero. And so when you look from the top, you are looking at basically like this. And then this, this is looking at this edge. You see. So you are actually seeing some kind of you are seeing part of the triangulation over there. And now this is the cusp. So, and so what what on the cusp you are seeing is you are developing the cusp, right? You take one triangle, then you take another triangle, then you take another triangle, and so you see this is how you are developing the cusp. That is the fundamental domain for the cusp. The shape of the fundamental domain for the cusp is a very nice invariant called the cusp shape. They are horospheres, right? So, so once you have this, you have one horosphere here, and so you have this height. And now, as your your group is acting, so these horospheres actually have conjugacy classes right over here. So as you move, and and they keep going down more and more, right? And as you move this height, these become bigger or smaller, right? So. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take. See, but that is the max one, and you can see all of the other other. Uh, yeah, it looks like a Christmas card. Right. Like yeah. So as you as you push completely and they are they are hitting against each other, that is what is called the maximal cast neighborhood. And now let's see if it computes the Dirichlet domain. There is a Dirichlet domain. Yeah, you can also see it in the Poincaré ball model. There it is. It has some finite points also, and some ideal points. And you can also see it in the Klein model, which is really cool because. Everything is done with straight lines and planes there. No, 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 the, the Dirichlet domain. Yeah, that is a whole different thing. It all depends, it depends on where the base point is and so on. All right, so let's now. 
uh, I am going to draw a link, we will do braid 1. So now if you, if you have your own link to draw, this is the link editor, alright. So you can just draw any link you want or not you want. Yeah, so you can just go to the crossing and flip it like so, yeah. There is also a command to make it alternating, you can make alternating, preserve diagram, you can do various things. You can also do what, what is nice about it is now this recently they have added many more things. Uh, so let me just show you. So what you can do is, uh, you can do this smooth thing, right. You can also do a smooth edit. So in case you do not like this, you can kind of do a, do it a more. <laughs> you need a bigger, anyway, you get the idea. So. Um, And uh, then, see this is nice and then what you can also do is, uh, where is the, you can download this as a, where is the, I am not able to see the command, edit file, save image. You can save it as tig z. If you do not know what that is. And if you are writing LaTeX and using pictures in not theory, you should see what you should learn what TIGZ is. It actually SVG is, or it also downloads is that SVG file, TIGZ file, so you can actually include it in a LaTeX file. Or you can be old style and download as PostScript and so on. Anyway, so you can you can do all of these things, but now we really want to compute hyperbolic invariants of this thing, so you can send it to Snappy. And so when you send it to Snappy, it says new triangulation received. And so now we can figure out what this manifold is. So uh, let us figure out if it is geometric. Uh, what is the what is the command for solution type? Thank you. Solution type, all tetrahedra positively oriented. It means that huh? we got lucky. <laughs> it means that it it you you submitted the link to snappy triangulated this it using this and doing some two three moves then it computed the gluing equations and solved the gluing equations numerically and by numerically solving it show it, it got that all the tetrahedra are positively oriented so now thurston's theorem says that now this is hyperbolic however there is one problem you cannot say snappy says it is hyperbolic because this whole uh, computation is done using using this Newton's method approximation. But there are a couple of ways you can make this rigorous. Uh, one is uh, uh, by using a program uh, or using a procedure called Hikmot, I think it is called H-I-K-M-O-T. So that program verifies that this solution which is showing approximate does actually exist. Or you can also use uh, another program called snap which I will also show you for uh, briefly. So anyway, so now you can you can find out its volume or whichever your invariance you want to you want to find. Um, if you want to do uh, if you want to browse this, it will try to find and see it, it detected a link. It is 8 for the, the 4 crossing the, the 4 component link with 8 crossings and the second in, in that list. That's the link. So that's the that's the volume. Interesting. Three point. This is two times, two times V eight. Right? See, I just draw a ring at random. Turns out to be an octahedral link. <laughs> so 
nice delicious domain number of groups capital a means a in little a inverse yes yes yeah so that is the link very nice link nice all right now that's a very nice cus neighborhood now you can see because there are four cus you can see uh, the horo balls corresponding to four different colors right because there are four cus and as you as you uh, uh, increase and decrease various cus so you can see where the i is you see there is a thing called i so now you are looking at from the cus which is denoted by the red component the red component is this red component over here so that's the cus which you are looking at and um, now you can you can in the, the change the height and you can really see makes like a very nice christmas card and it it changes accordingly right it scales accordingly and let's just um, uh, stop the four edges and now you, uh, there's a uh, uh, there is a triangulation and you can you can see all of these edges and so on and here is the fundamental domain i cannot do this okay there you can see the fundamental domain now see for that is for the cusp oh, but cusp. yeah but that's for the i is on this cusp so if you change it it that is the fundamental domain for the blue cusp then that is the fundamental domain for the green cusp that is the fundamental domain for the uh, teal teal cusp and oh now here is then then filling right remember we have the thorson's then filling theorem so now we can actually do then filling so let's do a uh, say a 2 5 den filling uh say 4 7 and now you fill it and it is now changed it changes the volume changes and it's telling you uh these are the shorter geodesics which is which it added right and so uh the homology has changed you have filled in two cusps so it it does all these kind of things so it's it's very very powerful um let's just do some den filling we just we just saw thorson's den filling theorem let's just take uh, uh, some not complement and do some den fillings on that so um we have this manifold n right n is what is n is 4100 so now we can do n dot den fill i always forget the um So let's do the infinity surgery, right? So let's look at the fundamental group. <laughs> right? What what is it, what does it mean? We are not getting anything. what is the infinity surgery on a knot 1 by 0 right you take out a knot but what is 1 times the meridian plus longitude is the meridian now you fill back the meridian in the, of the knot what will you get back yes you you have a knot you have the meridian of the knot now you 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 drill it uh, drill out the solid torus you fill it back but you are filling it back the same way right because the solid tore is the meridian is exactly the boundary of the of d2 so now you you if you fill in the meridian you're filling back the solid tore is exactly the way you removed it so you'll get back s3 again so there's no fundamental group and now that we know the point guard conjecture you know that this is s3 um but we can now uh, oh we have i may have to Oh, uh, you you can see solution type. It's let, let's look at solution type. It contains negatively oriented tetrahedra. So now we cannot conclude that this is actually actually hyperbolic. Uh, oh, there is maybe also geometry type. A oh, solution type. It's a solution type. Does it not say the geometry? Maybe it doesn't. um now it is uh, i think i will need to re enter the manifold 
Huh? Oh, it will still work. I, so you, uh, you're you're saying if I just do. It's negative. Now it is degenerated. Uh, negative volume just means it's not. Uh, you think I picked a bad surgery point? Unrecognized solution type. Okay. Um, let's do something very high. No, the manifold has degenerated. Okay, let us just reload it. Anyway, so you can you can see um, and there is the volume. So, it has then filled the volume has dropped and you can you can um, I I do not program in it, but um, the, will this work? Anyway, what, what I am trying to show you is that as I keep on increasing the den filling, my volume is approaching um, approaching the volume of the figure 8 not complement. See, it is 2.0 do something. Okay, so that is that's your. Uh, now you can also uh, the pi py stands for Python, so you can actually uh, program in it, and you can program in it and and do much more. But I don't do that that much programming. But you can you can for example write down look at all kinds of stuff. You can you can do dense dense fillings and look at what the homology looks like or or maybe how the fundamental group changes. You can you can look at the volume. You can look at say volume divided by the uh, den filling coefficients, all kinds of things which you can think of, you can program and you can test extensively. Um, anything more? You have some questions, yeah. I just wanted to demo on the, how, uh, the braid. The braid, yeah. So, uh, I don't exactly remember, but what I do is when I don't remember is is I go to this snappy website and it has very good documentation. If the internet works, that is. So I want to tell the grid. I know the grid representation. I want to encode the not be that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. One, one minute. I'll just do that. Oh, they have some. Oh, this site cannot be reached. Okay. So, do, do, whoa, what happened? All right. I had a, I must have accidentally closed the window. Okay. Uh, so, let us do, we want to see braid. So, it says there is a fibered manifold associated with the braid, but if you want a braid closure, do a 1 0 filling on the last cusp. So, let us just do this. So, P Q. So, P Q is manifold. Thank you. <laughs> I 
All right. So, yes. So, right now what you are seeing is you have a braid, but with the braid axis on. So, um, let us browse this and see if you can see a picture of it. Oh, so, you cannot, it did not recognize. Why is it not showing the picture? So, you see it is it's showing that it is a link with two components. So, we need to, we need to fill in the last um, cusp. So, how many cusps are there? Minus cusp. So, it is two cusps. So, you do then fill one zero by by doing a one zero feeling it's a it's a thank thank you <laughs> see i i when i'm using snappy i get stuck i i call up Elia and he tells me so um one zero filling is an infinity filling right one divided by zero so that's that's basically vanishing the link component so if you do this now i am missing something yeah Right, so then filling last cusp, there it is. Okay. There. And now if you look at what the volume is, the volume is seems to have vanished. Okay. So, do you remember the figure eight not braid? Anyone? Okay. So, let us try q dot volume. You can see it has big volume and now let us do the den filling and now you see the volume has dropped. Right. So, there are only two manifolds uh, which have these this volume and the one is the figure it and the other is the figure it sister. Um, the first volume is the braid with the with the axis and now you need to fill the axis that is what it says. If you look at That is that is the smallest point on the volume spectrum for cusp manifolds. It is proved by Meyerhoff and Kao that there are exactly two manifolds with that volume and that is the smallest volume. Uh, more any questions what else uh, there is a demo do you want to see the demo for it or you want to see it at home yeah maybe maybe you can see it it's there on the website was that <coughs> the injectivity radius the diameter mm. so there is a bunch of alexander polynomial uh, Dirichlet domain, dual curves, uh, SLN torsion. There is your some SLN representations. It is it is expanded to much more now. It is able to do not just hyperbolic geometry, but uh, for various specific links and knots and links. You can also compute Alexander polynomials, Jones polynomials. Uh, there is all of this Ptolemy generalized obstruction classes, tetrahedral shapes. So you can see there are trace field generators. It can also it can do some trace fields. So talking about just fields, oh, uh, uh, let you, we can also see some matrices. Let me just see how to pull up the matrices. The, 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 Bianchi, the Bianchi groups, the Bianchi groups, uh, they are not there, uh, but there are they are commensurable to figure eight naught and some arithmetic links. And so those arithmetic links, if you know, you can you can you can look at various index and subgroups yeah
um, depending on what you're studying. Yes, yes, I, I, I like that class. Kate likes it too. Yeah. Okay. If for arithmetic manifolds, yes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, there aren't, there is only, only figure eight knot, complement knot is the arithmetic knot. That's the only arithmetic knot. No other knots are arithmetic. That's a theorem of Alan Reed. So for knot theorists, it's not that exciting. The Bianchi groups. The link, link, links, there are more, yeah. Do you know if there is a link uh, which gets each Bianchi group? There are many arithmetic links. No, I think the, isn't there um, the cuspidal cohomology, I think. Oh, oh, that's right. That. Uh, some link groups from incommensurable to Yes. <coughs> yeah, so there's an obstruction. Not all BNK groups uh, occur as, occur as link, link complements or commensurable to link complements. Yeah, but not the, there are Bianchi groups which are not commensurable to any link complements. I think the issue is if you commensurate, if you have a link complement, the I have to plug very roughly because otherwise I'll say things that are wildly incorrect. Um, but if you compute a certain cohomology uh, based on the the cusp, since it's a link. Yes, it was Karan Vokman. Uh, let me just show you the link for the videos one minute. Uh, so, if you go to the reading list, uh, so I put up some snappy, that is the, uh, and then there is a demo. So, this demo is on YouTube. I don't know why why is there no sound? Yeah. Should we turn the sound from there? Right? This cable? Sort of a terminal window and this is the main way that you enter. See? Use Maybe, yeah, maybe if you, yeah, maybe play with the volume there. Huh? Why is it not? Yeah, the video is playing. Some sound came, some few seconds. 
Huh? Yes. So it's basic. There's sort of three things I'd like you to a modern cross platform interface for Jeff Week's Snap Team kernel. I'll be demonstrating the Macintosh OS 10 version, but the other two versions from Windows and from Unix based systems such as Linux are very similar. So um, you just start it like you would any other Macintosh application, a uh, Windows Windows application. Uh, and it brings up a little window here, which is sort of a terminal window, and this is the main way that you interact with Snap. Uh, so it's basic. There's sort of three things I'd like you to learn from this little demonstration, um, and they're all about how this program is documented. I mean, the problem with a command line interface like this is you have this flashing cursor, and we don't know what to do. So there's a little message there that says uh, type manifold with question mark after it. I will do that. And lo and behold, it prints out some documentation. Uh, this is a universal thing. You type any object, function, uh, whatever in the terminal window here, and you put a question mark after it, and hit return, it will give you some documentation about it. So in this case, uh, it tells you that manifold is triangulation together with some kind of hyperbolic structure, um, and then it starts telling you about how these things can be specified. For instance, you can specify it as a knot, or some kind of, kind of manifold from the census. Um, I'll show you later how to get a manifold from a link by drawing a link with the mouse. Um, and all this documentation is an addition available on the web page or as part of the documentation that comes with the program. So the thing we were just looking at, if we go down here to a Python interface for SnapD, the terminal window there is something which is running on the Python programming language. Um, if you were looking at Manifold, that was the object we were looking for. And here again is the same exact message we're just looking at. It's formatted pretty nicely here. Uh, and it lists not just the basics, but it also lists all the various things you can do. OK, so we're back here on our window. And uh, they told us various ways we can create a manifold. So I'll do that. I will have a complement of figure 8 knot, the 4 one knot. All right, so now we have apparently created a manifold. But again, one has the problem. What do you do next? So the second thing I'd like to show you. Um, is tab completions is the uh, other key thing besides the question mark for using this program. So um, I just type M and I type a dot there, period, and I hit tab. And what it does is it lists all the things I could do to this manifold. So for instance, I could look at the cover of the manifold, or I could drill out a curve, or I could look at its fundamental group, its homology, its volume, and so on. So now I have some idea about what I could do with these things. Um, so maybe I'll just do it. One of the things there is volume. Now, of course, that's going to print out hyperbolic volume, but maybe I don't know that. Um, and so I could ask it, well, gosh, what is this going to do? Cause my computer to explode? No. Uh, <laughs> it simply returns the volume with the manifold, that it says. And one thing you'll notice here, uh, there's typically some examples for each of these uh, methods. They're called things you can do to the object of the manifold. Uh, there's a little example of how you would use it. In this case, the example shows creating the manifold and 004, which is in fact the figure 8 not complement, and then asking as well. So now it's actually. Uh, so, you know, there are various other things you could uh, ask about, such as homology, uh, homology through the Z, or uh, its fundamental group. So, in addition to basic things like that, uh, we could also uh, maybe do a day and filling on this manifold. That was one of the things we had before. Uh, and again, you might wonder, well, how do I specify uh, the particular filling I want to do? So again, we just ask it. Give me quite a list of uh, examples there. So here's an example where it's creating a four cusp manifold, so a complement of certain eight cross and link in the three sphere. And then it's filling in the second cusp, cusps of numbers starting at zero. Um, and it's filling in by the two, three fill. So if we look at that, and we could then uh, maybe want to do the two, three filling on our manifold, which only has one cusp, cusp zero. Uh, and now, yes, we can look at the volume of the manifold we created. Homology, lot easy, lot three, 
is in Z mod 2. Um, and okay, so now we, we filled it in, and maybe we decided we, we actually liked it complete, so uh, one of the things you can do with access to history of all command type. So I typed that M, hit the up arrow, we'll go to all commands that match the initial prefix I typed. So, uh, which of course so far has been almost all of them. Um, and so I can go back here. Uh, let's make it just a complete. Ah, sorry. Made a error. It complained. This is not a pair of numbers. But it's like, there we go. So now it should be back to the original figure eight. Mm -hmm. Zero, zero is unfilled. Unfilled. specify some kind of name. What happens is then it pops up a little link window you can see here. And so now we can draw a link or not. In a fit of creativity, I will draw the figure eight. And uh, once I've drawn this, I can, of course, adjust crossings. I can move Existing things around. I could, if I double click, I could break it open. Add a little curly cue in here and change it to polygon comp. Um, so we can do things like that. There's some options here. We can reflect it, make it alternating. Um, also, print out a Dalgo Thistle thing code, do that kind of thing. Okay, well, anyway, I've drawn this. Now I need to get it back into the terminal window. So I do that just by selecting the menu item here, send to snap. Now it's got that thing. Uh, we guess what's the volume. It's manifold. It was a figure eight knot, so it's the same as I had before. And if I just wanted to uh, confirm that, so it's really the same manifold I can do that. I can ask, are these manifolds isometric? And the answer is yes. But again, the, the really key things here um, are uh, this introspection, as it's called. That's the thing with the question mark giving us a some information about. Taking yeah. Um, so when he when he showed uh, when he typed the command is m isometric to n, so it's actually come that is a rigorous uh, answer because you have a triangulation and you have another triangulation and all it's checking is the combinatorial equivalence. And remember, there's master rigidity. So if it's topologically equivalent, that implies that it is geometrically equivalent. So that uh, answer is actually a rigorous check. So whenever it says it is isometric, it's actually a proof that it is isometric. It shouldn't be hyperbolic. What's that? It should be hyperbolic. It should be hyperbolic. But if you look at the census manifolds, they're all verified that they're hyperbolic. So you don't need to verify that the, 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 the various senses they have. Uh, let me just show you about the census um, and then we can stop. The plink? Yeah, the plink editor is you have m dot, uh, uh, sorry, m, m equal to manifold and then you just do empty bracket and then you will get to the plink. So, um, let me just go back to the snappy website. Where? Oh, <laughs> yeah, the knots which I have seen on, my, on and also on the conference web page, um, those knots there behind, uh, they are they are the census knots which we found a few years ago, many years ago. Uh, which are the simplest hyperbolic knots. So, um, site cannot be reached, why it cannot be reached? Oh, because my, why does it do this? Why did it log me off? Anyway, 
let us let, let, let just stop it. So, um, you can go to the uh, you can go to the uh, conference home page and then there is a snappy link and you can go to the snappy link and there are more videos. I have just put up two videos, but there are more videos now. I think there are some uh, a recent talk which Nathan gave and it, it gives you it gives more features about snappy. But you, you have to play around, it is very easy to download the program, install as I said, it is one click and install. So, everything is has made it very easy. And then you can play around with various things and once you start working, if you start working on it, you can really go and experiment with various things. It has been very, very useful to uh, uh, us which I mean for all these years and Kate also probably used, did you use Snappy a lot? But yeah, all of us as graduate students and so on use Snappy extensively. All right, thank you very much.